If you want to hear it. Yeah, uh, yeah, we could scare them by playing the tape, but I decided I, yeah. I didn't want that. I didn't want the. Well, I wanted to play it for her. I'll tell you the truth. That was one of your lawyers. That was yeah, the last that's lawyer. The last one, Claudia yeah. Oney. That's the one that sent me that threatening letter. I could be sued for six thousand. Uh, tell me, after made court, up her own law. Uh, tell me this: What were the golf, golf club attorneys doing with the witnesses during your trial? I don't know. Well, they were talking I was paying for the depositions. I was because he and tried the, to the, 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 He told me before we started the show, they were signaling the answers yes. to the witnesses. Oh yes. Well, what do you think about that? You run a, a a newspaper. What do you think about it? That's unheard of. That's completely unheard of. There's something with the judge, right? Exactly. The judge allows... It shows again that this was in the fix and everything was planned out to the second. The lawyer, for their side, positioned himself to where Jim Brennan was sitting there. And he was giving the answers, shaking his yes, so, yes or uh, no to Bob White. Let me see if we understand this. Uh, have you, oh, no. if any of you, as this, you know, you're all in the same family, have any of you figured out what was the motive to do this to your father? Now, was your father knew a lot, right? They, they, they wanted to scandalize him. You they want to win at any cost. But they, in other words, they wanted to make your father a liar, right? And they wanted to make a fool of him. Uh, the, whole, the whole motive of it was, first of all, that he was not young. He didn't want to party. He knew, and he knew too much about what was going in there. But the main thing is age discrimination. He is 50-something years old, and they want somebody 30-something years old, like the manager, Bob White, is. They wanted somebody to party with. They wanted somebody to have their parties with after hours. And my dad didn't want any part of that. And this is the whole object of it. Well, all the members couldn't stand Bob White. It was just the board that liked him. At some point, before you really knew about Henry Hyde's involvement, uh, one of you wrote a letter to Henry Hyde. I wonder if they could have it up on the screen now. The, the I sent him all my papers. But we're going to show the letter in a moment, the top of the letter anyway. <laughs> um, he's going to focus in on the letter, though. But it was, this, this is really ridiculous, right? Henry Hyde is the one that we all feel fixed this case. Oh, yes. And because he's the head of the House Judiciary Committee, yes. you went and sent... I sent him my papers because I didn't notice at that point. So he well, mentioned you, you Bob said, White saying that. I just, you, you, you I just said, sent my papers to the enemy. You, 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 yeah, you, you, he's a political clout. And I words, sent it to him. In effect, you, you, you sent a complaint to a, what we all feel is a crook. So I sent all my papers. Crook, the whole case wrote to him. Crook, will you investigate... There's yes. federal judges, because you're the one that's got to impeach somebody. And he's the man behind it. The man is supposed to punish him. That's a riot. Put a footmark on all the papers sent back. My to papers were sent back almost uh, in a garbage moment, bag. In a with moment, a we're going to have that up on the screen. But let's continue uh, <laughs> uh, going into that. Uh, here's your garbage, woman. You know what I mean? Yeah, here it is up on the screen. Uh, uh, we'll just show it to, 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 to show what, what the deal is. Uh, and that letter he sent me back is a bunch of psycho babble. Nobody could read that section E and do this. And I'm not saying anybody did anything wrong. My God, you had to be an idiot to take that one. You know what's wrong? Decipher it, somebody, you know? On a bigger picture frame, it just shows that Hyde cannot be trusted to do whatever it has, has to be done with our president, Clinton, right? Oh, of course. At the time that we're taping this, Hyde is supposed to investigate Clinton. He's worried about perjury to put it in the whole trial of the judge. We're going to do a, a, another show that maybe Clinton and his friends has got to investigate Hyde. There's a, there's a toss up there. Who is a bigger scumbag, Hyde <laughs> or Clinton? <laughs> who's got more power? I think Hyde would be a toss up. <laughs> you see that? She thinks it's a bigger toss up. Okay, who's got more power, Hyde or Clinton? All right, Clinton. so let's go to the next point. So uh, you, you took an appeal, and at that time, the one that, the woman lawyer that you had didn't want to take the appeal, right? Uh, what she did is just ignored the whole the whole appeal. She said she was going to take it, but uh, no, 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 repeat again what she told you that you have on tape. Tell us again because we want to emphasize uh, about the court. I kept right. insisting on having my appeal go through. I put in my own appeal, and she pulled it by having them sign a paper. Yeah, I saw those papers. It right. Was, Tell us again what she told you, which you taped. She Tell just us. told me that I, I'm out of my mind going on with this. She says, I happen to know for a fact, and I'm right, that Williams and Bobrick are biased. The magistrate. Now, right. why do I come up in my mind not knowing that the appellate court judges are just as biased? Where does she think I'm going with this appeal? Yeah, okay. They're always for the corporate. She said they're always for the corporation, never for the because plaintiff. Chicago, let me tell you, I've been at this 40 years. Take my word on it. 
I've demonstrated this again. She told me not to take it personal. It's just not me. No, it's personal. Chicago has got the most crooked judges of anywhere in the United States. You don't have to tell me. And I and my friends years ago had a federal appeals judge sent to jail for bribery. So, hey, we know. So you, you, you went up on appeal. And, and what, what happened, Jerry? She wanted me to sign, uh, sign it off for right now. She's going to add more things to it, which she didn't. But they kept pressuring you to settle the thing, right? Right. Oh, the all four little terms. And, and what was the reason you didn't settle? I wouldn't have made nothing. And he wanted to clear his uh, name. He was he I wanted to meet the right. one, Yeah. Uh, let me let me point out something. So, of the three judges uh, that had your appeal, that says the golf club, everything's okay, right? They mm -hmm. okayed everything, right? Uh, let me just tell you what this program knows about two of them. First of all, one of the judges is federal appeals judge Daniel Mannion. And when they confirm them, all on this panel should be shocked. He's an illiterate. He can hardly read and write. I, I know Kim was thinking, well, wait a minute. What do you think about this, Kim? You've got a newspaper we're going to go into that. A judge can hardly read and write. How did he get there? Yeah, okay, I'm, okay. Okay. I'm surprised he ain't chief justice as well. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, the other judge, is Frank Easterbrook. And let me tell you what we know about him. We heard from other lawyers, and we finally I verified it myself and mentioned it on this program. Judge Frank Easterbrook apparently is on dope. Why? They sit in panels of three, and uh, in the middle of a, you know, the oral presentation of an appeal, he suddenly is looking and giggling to the ceiling. I saw it myself. So one lawyer, I'm sure he almost got this buzz, says, Judge, what is the joke on the ceiling? Can we know? But the other lawyers tell me off the record, he says, I wouldn't dare. And he's the one that took your father's appeal with this illiterate Daniel Mann. He says, hey, it's all proper. What they did in the lower card is... Now he tells me I would have put my appeal up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your mother was the smartest of the whole thing. She would have put the thing up there judge. <laughs> yeah. put your appeal up on the ceiling. Well, it wouldn't have helped. You would have just giggled and laughed. Yeah, yeah, but what they did, what they did to, to me and my friend uh, Joseph Andresetti that helps with this program is not very funny. Uh, because of a program that we did, we called him Easter Bunny, Judge Easter Bunny, Judge Easter Book. He ordered us barred from the federal courts throughout this part of the United States. And see, they're the court of last resort, generally, because the U.S. Supreme Court doesn't hear many cases. I know you're into journalism, and I'm sure you're saying, Skolnick, how could they bar you? Don't ask. They did it. Did they so I, I find it interesting, court. you know, Hyde, that dominates your case, and we all believe that, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, that, yeah, yeah definitely. Do, do, do you believe that that's a ground to impeach a judge that he's on dope? I don't remember what happened here. Who will work them? But don't, don't you understand? Nobody. Nobody. But don't you understand? Appointed. Hyde, let's see if we all agree to this. If you don't agree, tell me. Hyde dominates this case. He's big with that country, with the golf club, it's right? Too, mm -hmm. Yes, too many connections. And, and Easterbrook, and this other thing away, this illiterate, should be removed by Hyde because he heads up the impeachment committee, the House Judiciary mm -hmm. Committee. So instead, Easterbrook sits there, I'm dope, nobody does anything. And when we talk about it in our program, who gets punished? We do. I, I don't know if it avails you anything, but uh, let's put in the final details. So one of your lawyers, the one that was not the trial lawyer, Prendergast, mm -hmm. well, what did he do to you? He sued us for $31,000. Yes, speak up, tell us. Well, I guess he claimed he had some money coming for screwing up our case the way he did, you know, so I guess he thought he had some benefits coming. I, I saw the contract, and um, it doesn't look like you owed him anything. It was uh, what they call a contingency. Right. So, and so it, the letter came the same time her letter came, suing me for $60,000. Uh, so, 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 in other money. words, you filed a counterclaim against your former lawyer. Right. And you put in there what? You remember some of the things you put in there? Uh, just the basics, uh, that he had no right to take on the case in the first place. Because he was incompetent. Right, and he certainly couldn't take it on. And he didn't have, have a license. Right. To go into a federal court and try this case. Yeah, the, the, the federal and court requires a spe separate, yeah. Uh, and the thing that he, that he wanted to extort $25,000 from us, or he wouldn't go on with the case, was the day, in my opinion, he quit. And the third count of your counterclaim against your former lawyer was for malpractice. And what did the judge do? With your counterclaim against your former lawyer, what happened? Well, for instance, with our, lawsuit, with our lawsuit, when he gave us our lawsuit, 
We were also going to be five days late. We had to put in a motion. We were going to be five days late. Our attorney, Grod Grodner, had to do. Yeah, okay. Now, now this guy was supposed to have his papers in on May the 20th. His former lawyer that sued him. That's right. Mm -hmm. We countersued him, and he was supposed to put in his answer by May the 20th. Look what it is now. Right, we're taping this show late in October, and... Uh, <laughs> I got a tape on a B.C. Cunningham, too. And we're and, still and we're we're that. He was supposed to file an answer to your counterclaim. Yes. 